Hey folks, welcome to GitHub Universe, and thanks for joining this session on how to go from GitHub to the cloud in minutes with the Azure Developer CLI. I'm Savannah Ostrowski, a senior product manager working on Azure Cloud Native Developer Tools and Experience at Microsoft, and I am super excited to walk you through what my team has been working on. So let's jump in. When you start developing a new application, it all starts from an idea. Let's call this the ideation phase. Maybe you're interested in building something simple, say, a to-do web application where you can keep track of daily tasks. You'll probably want to add some features like the ability to add tasks, add due dates, tick things off when you've completed them, and organize them into lists or categories. And right off the bat, you might be able to identify that you need a front end for the user interface, a back end for the API, and a database to store all of your tasks and all of the right metadata. From there, you need to make some decisions. The first set of big decisions about your application. You might have some existing knowledge about libraries and frameworks, have a tech stack that you've used before, or you might need to do some research to identify the best options for your application. After careful consideration, you decide to take those components in the ideation phase and choose some libraries and frameworks to move forward with. You pick React for the front end, Python with FastAPI for the back end, and MongoDB for the database. You also know that you're gonna write code in Visual Studio Code because you're familiar with it and there are extensions there that make you your most productive. So you've decided on your idea and you've chosen a tech stack to move forward with. Now it's on to the implementation phase. So let's say you've been working on this for a little bit and you've gotten something that's working great locally. The next step here might be to get it up and running on Azure. However, maybe you don't have a ton of expertise in the cloud. How do I get this up and running on Azure is actually a really big question that requires you to do a bunch of cloud-specific research. More than that, as you research, more questions can pop up, like which cloud services should I use with my code? How should I set up my local development environment? How do I provision the right infrastructure for my application? How do I know that what I'm doing incorporates security best practices? And some of these questions might not have answers that are super straightforward. And even after doing some research, you might end up with a, it depends on X, Y, or Z, being the answer to any one of these questions, making things even more cumbersome. So as it turns out, we've heard these questions and others come up time and time again from developers. A lot of application developers don't have deep expertise in cloud infrastructure and architecture, which makes it challenging for them to know that what they're doing makes sense for their application, will support the experience and performance they require, and is secure in using best practices. Okay, so we've talked a lot about questions. Now let's take a look at some answers. There are, of course, many different options for getting this to-do application up and running on Azure, but let's talk through one option. To get this basic web app up and running on Azure with a front end, back end, and database, and some monitoring infrastructure, we need to provision or create nine different resources. We would need an app service plan to define the set of compute resources needed for the web app to run, two Azure app service instances for the front end and back end of the application, key vaults to store application secrets because inlining tokens and passwords isn't secure, Cosmos DB API for MongoDB for our database, a log analytics workspace to store collected logs and data, application insights to provide live app performance management and monitoring, and a portal dashboard. Not only that, but we need to figure out how to set up the rules and permissions, configure the services, get set up to be productive when locally developing, figure out how to write the queries and create the charts to monitor the app, make sure we have everything in place to ensure the app isn't breaking with new commits to the repo, and more. So what started out as a pretty simple web application actually turned out to be a little more complicated when we added the cloud to the equation. All in all, answering all of these cloud-specific questions and provisioning the right infrastructure and getting the code deployed on Azure is a lot to think about and manage, especially if you aren't well-versed in cloud architecture and best practices. And if you're an application developer, this hinders your productivity and velocity when you're just trying to write app code. Thankfully, this is where tooling can really help us end-to-end -end in the journey from GitHub to local development environment to the cloud. The Azure Developer CLI, or AZD, is a new open source tool that provides higher level application developer friendly commands that map to key stages in your developer workflow. So you can focus on writing application code without getting bogged down by the nitty gritty of the cloud. Think code, build, deploy, monitor, and repeat. Better yet, these commands can be used from the environment that you're most comfortable in, whether that be CLI, Visual Studio Code, or Visual Studio. The Azure Developer CLI uses extensible application templates that include everything you need to get an application up and running on Azure. The templates include application code and reusable infrastructure as code assets written in Bicep or Terraform and are infused with cloud best practices. More than that, they cover end-to-end -end scenarios that go far past Hello World. We're talking project initialization, provisioning, deployment, monitoring, and CI-CD. 
These templates are programming language idiomatic so that the conventions used are the conventions that you are most familiar and comfortable with. There are a host of templates on GitHub for you to choose from. You can take a look by visiting the AZD templates topic. The Azure Developer CLI supports workloads in Python, JavaScript, and .NET. And also, as of this release, we have support for Java workloads as well. In terms of Azure hosts, we currently have support for Azure Container Apps, Azure App Service, Azure Static Web Apps, and Azure Functions, with support for Azure Kubernetes Service coming soon. And because all of this is open source, you can choose from an existing template built by our team or developers in the community, or even make your own code base AZD compatible and share out the template with the community. Now, you might be familiar with CLIs that generate infrastructure as code assets or scaffold an application, but the Azure Developer CLI does both of those things and more. Taking a look at the AZD template structure, each template has real application code to provide you with a solid foundation, a .vs code directory with a launch JSON file to define the debug configurations and a task JSON file to define the configurations to start the web or API server for local development, an infra directory which contains a host of infrastructure as code assets written in either BICEP or Terraform to provision the right resources, deploy code on Azure and set up application monitoring, a .github directory which contains a GitHub Actions workflow to test your application against real Azure resources on every commit, and some AZD-specific files to define the application. Let's come back to that infra directory I just mentioned. This directory and the files inside it are integral to how the Azure Developer CLI knows what to provision for you and how to deploy your code on Azure. If you're unfamiliar, infrastructure as code is a way that you can manage and provision your cloud infrastructure and services via code. The files in this directory specify the services you want to create, their configurations, and how they interact. Using infrastructure as code, we can ensure that the environment is generated in the same way each time everything is deployed to the cloud. Infrastructure as code also means that instead of you or your team needing to manage or maintain environment settings individually, you can work off the same well-documented code that represents the desired environment state, avoiding deployment issues by keeping everything consistent. Right now, the Azure Developer CLI supports two different infrastructure as code providers, BICEP and Terraform. The infrastructure as code provider you choose is up to you. You'll find templates that support both via the AZD templates tag on GitHub. So now that we understand what the Azure Developer CLI is, and we've talked a little bit about its foundational end-to-end -end templates, let's take a look at how it can help us accelerate the journey from GitHub to Azure Cloud in just a couple of minutes and with a single step. All of the Azure Developer CLI templates are easy to search for using the AZD templates topic on GitHub. Here you'll see both Microsoft and community authored templates that cover common end-to-end -end developer scenarios. Let's take a look at this to-do Python Mongo template. This template shows developers how to build a to-do application written in React and Python with Fast API that includes a web app, an API, and a database. It includes everything needed to deploy to Azure App Service and to configure all of the connections required for the web app, database, and API to communicate. In the template, we'll also see that there's a readme that includes an architecture diagram that describes the application and instructions on how to get started. OK, so I'm going to start with this template, which in this case pretty much matches my tech stack and application perfectly. But even if it didn't, we could always swap out or modify the application code or even the infrastructure as code assets to make this template work for my use case. So I have AZD installed on my local machine, and I can take a look at what's available to me by typing azd-h. I created a new directory earlier, so let's double check that we're in the right place. Today, I'm going to use the Azure Developer CLI from within Visual Studio Code, so let's open the editor using code dot to show how this works in practice. The nice thing about using the Azure Developer CLI is that regardless of the client application you choose, the same commands are used under the hood. So I'm in VS Code, and I've installed the Azure Tools extension pack, which includes the Azure Developer CLI, as well as other extensions that we'll touch on later that can help us manage the, our resources from within the editor. So let's start by opening the command palette by using Command-Shift-P or Control-Shift-P, depending on our operating system, and typing Azure Developer or AZD. Here we'll see a bunch of commands, but right now the most relevant one is AZD up. This is the most magical command that the Azure Developer CLI has to offer. I say that because we want everything that the CLI does to be transparent and without hidden side effects so that we can keep things easy to reason about. This command wraps up project initialization, provisioning, and deployment in one step by wrapping three AZD commands, AZD init, AZD provision, and AZD deploy. So let's give it a shot. So first I'm asked for a template. I can either choose one from the list, or if I don't see the template I'd like to use, I can input another template by specifying the full GitHub URL. I see that same template we looked at before on GitHub in the list, so I'll go ahead and select to do Python Mongo. Now, the terminal is opened in my VS Code workspace, and we're being asked for an environment name. 
I'm just going to input savannah-gh-universe, but you could input whatever you'd like. In a fully-fledged web app, maybe we'd have dev, test, and prod environments with different sets of resources, which AZD does support, but for now, I'll keep it simple. Next, we're asked for a region where our resources will be created, and then a subscription, so I'll go ahead and select those. And that's it. Now the Azure Developer CLI will orchestrate some work on Azure on my behalf, and I can go grab a coffee while I wait a couple of minutes for all of our resources to be provisioned and our code to be deployed on Azure. Once this is done, we can see that I've got application code now in my VS Code workspace, a log of everything that was provisioned for me with unique identifiers that I can reference in the Azure portal, and endpoints for our front end and back end. If I click these, I can see that I've got an open API schema for our API and a fully functioning web application that I can build upon and customize for my use case. I'll go ahead and add a couple of items to my to-do list to kick things off. If I ever want to tear everything I just provisioned and deployed down, I could also run the azd down command and the Azure Developer CLI would take care of that for me. With the application deployed and the code open in the current workspace, let me show you what else is possible using the Azure Tools extension pack. We recently restructured the Explorer view to ensure that all of your most important web resources are visible. First, you'll notice the structure by Azure Service, but I can change this view by clicking the Group By button, which will better match what I just deployed. Notice that when I expand a resource group, I can see everything that was deployed. Clicking the Focus button cleans things up for me even more, so I can focus only on what's important to me in this workspace. The extensions store the focus state per workspace, so the next time I open this project in VS Code, I'll see that same focused view. Expanding the API resource, you can see that we have access to manage app settings or environment variables, view the files that are deployed, and view or stream logs. Right-clicking on the resource, you can see that it's also possible to stop and restart the app or even start and stop streaming logs. Moving on to the database, there are different options. Expanding the Cosmos DB account, you can see the to-do database for our app. Expanding that, we can see the to-do item collection and each document within the collection. Clicking on a document opens it in the editor where you can edit the value for state. Remember those two endpoints that were printed out for our front end and back end after running AZD up? I can also access those at any time by right clicking on the web or API resources and clicking browse website. Because I just modified the state of my database items in VS Code, you'll see that everything is now marked as done. So we've covered local development, provisioning, and deploying on Azure. But when it comes to building something meaningful and long lasting, I know that it's not enough to just have the application up and running in the cloud. We need to make sure that we're infusing best practices into our workflow. With AZD Monitor, we can see the dashboards and queries that have been created on our behalf using the template and the Azure Developer CLI that track usage, performance, and reliability metrics. That way, I know my app is performing as I expect, and if it's not, this gives me solid signal of when it might be time to consider scaling out my infrastructure. Let's check it out. To run AZD Monitor from within VS Code, we can either use the command palette again, or we can also right-click on the Azure.yaml in our project to open the context menu and see all of the available AZD commands. From here, we'll select Monitor from the menu, and we'll be presented with some options to look at live metrics, logs, or the overview dashboard. I'm not sure about anyone else, but I've spent a ton of time setting up dashboards in the past, so this is a huge time saver. Speaking of best practices, the Azure Developer CLI also allows us to scaffold a GitHub Actions workflow by running AZD Pipeline Config. In each template, you'll find a .github directory with an Azure Dev.yaml, which will set up a GitHub action to run against real Azure resources on every commit to your repo, which helps give you some confidence that as changes are being made to the code base, things are staying functional and working as expected. And again, the same commands that are run in the CLI or in VS Code are used in our CI CD pipeline, so things are consistent regardless of the client application running them. Let's give it a shot. Let's open the context menu again by right-clicking on the Azure.yaml, but this time we'll select Pipeline Config, and the Azure Developer CLI will now use that .github directory to set up our CI CD pipeline. First, we'll be asked if we want to create a new Git repository. Then we'll be asked to configure a remote. I'm also now given some options. I can either use an existing repo, create a new private repo, or enter a remote URL. I'll select private repo. I'm also asked for a name for this new repo. By default, the CLI will use the name of the root directory for the project. You could also type in a custom name if you'd like. Now the CLI will go off and do some work to configure repo secrets for me to wire everything up. Finally, I'll be asked if I want to commit and push all my changes to the new repo and kick off a run of the CI CD pipeline. Hopping over to GitHub, I can open the Actions tab and see that a pipeline run has been kicked off. This pipeline will now run on every new commit I or anyone else pushes to this repo. And that's pretty much it. We've gone over the Azure Developer CLI and its templates that support you through local development and editors like VS Code, provisioning infrastructure and deploying code on Azure, and best practices that are infused into your workflow through application monitoring and CI CD with GitHub Actions.
More than that, the support provided is flexible yet opinionated without being overly prescriptive of your developer workflow or requirements. So to wrap this up, let's go over the AZD workflow one last time. To start, the first question that comes to mind might be, what do I want to build? This is the ideation phase of the development process that I mentioned earlier. Via the AZD template list command or by visiting the AZD templates topic on GitHub, you'll be able to browse templates that support you in finding the right foundational recipe for your application. Next comes the question of scaffolding your project and iterating on it. With AZD init, you're able to pull template code down from GitHub and get your local development environment set up. From here, you can modify the template to make it work for your application specific requirements. Remember, these templates were designed to be flexible. You could also make your own code base AZD compatible and create your own template by using the AZD init command. Now it's onto the cloud with AZD provision and AZD deploy. Using these commands, you're able to provision the right resources for your application and deploy code on Azure based on infrastructure as code assets written in Bicep or Terraform included in your template. Better yet, you can use AZD up to wrap up all of those commands in a single step, which is what I showed off earlier. Finally, let's talk best practices. With the AZD monitor and AZD pipeline config, we can set up monitoring and dashboards as well as a CI CD pipeline for our code base. If you're interested in giving the Azure Developer CLI a shot, visit aka.ms slash azduniverse. That's where you'll find our developer hub, which hosts all of our documentation, installation instructions, and a guide on how to build your own Azure Developer CLI template. To install the Azure Tools extension pack for VS Code, which includes the Azure Developer CLI extension, visit aka.ms slash aztools-universe. Again, thanks for joining this session on going from GitHub to the Azure Cloud in minutes with the Azure Developer CLI. I cannot wait to see what you build.